Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. A few videos ago, I made a whole bunch of these really cool handles for jigs and all sorts of things. And today, we're going to use them and make our own custom-made push pads. The first thing we do is make sure that the bases here are nice and flat and even. And we can do that just by sanding on a flat surface like this and that gives us a nice even base for us to mount the handle to. Now I have a couple of different sizes of bases that I'm going to use. This is the first one I'm going to use and I want to make sure that this handle is in the middle so I just cut something sort of a measuring stick and all I need to do now is clamp that on there and align that with the end and now when I put my handle in my vise, when I turn that over, that'll align that perfectly in there. And all I need to do now is drill some holes for the screws to go through. Now I can align that with my fingers on each side and I can actually see the handle from here. So I'm just going to eyeball it. I need to make sure that's tight. And I can just go right straight down from there. Okay, and now I can just put that screw in there. Perfect. Now we'll just drill the next one. There we have the perfect push block. There's the first push block and you can see it looks pretty nice. It handles well, it's a good size, but we've got a lot to work on yet. Now, remember some number of videos ago, I showed you that you can purchase this foam stuff from a variety of craft stores and it's a little bit spongy, comes in a, a few different thicknesses. I got a thicker one and a thinner one. I don't know if you can see that, but what I'm going to do with this now is use this as a template because I'm going to put some of this on the bottom and it's already sticky so I don't even have to worry about gluing it down. I'm just going to position that and cut it out like that. A little off the mark there. <laughs> Now we're still not quite ready, but that's a good, even that is a good start. Let's trim that a little bit there. So that's a good push stick right there, but I'm going to do one step more. I'm going to put some of this um, anti-skid material on it too, but I need to make sure that it's going to cover the entire area that I need here. Okay, now what I'm going to do with this, I am going to staple this material on here because I might want to replace it sometime. So I'm just using a very shallow staple. Well, it might not be my most beautiful piece of work. Oh, that's nice there. That's what really counts. Well, let's make another one here. And this time I'm going to use one of the slanted ones. And I'm also going to make it quite a bit narrower. And the reason for that is I want to be able to use something on my router table that is going to get as close to the bit as I can because I sometimes am running some narrow stock through there. So let's put that in the vise.
There we go. There's another pad. I love the way these catch on the wood. They really grab the wood nicely. Let's go over to the router table and have a look at that. There you go. And you can see why that angle is nice there. It's just more comfortable to hold. And I like how that gets right right close into that. This, this is just a test here. Now here's the commercial one that came with my jointer that I use over here sometimes. You can see how much bigger it is. It doesn't, you know, to get close in there, it really doesn't work. Uh, and this is perfect because it gets right close in there. Well, that concludes my video for today. And you can see I've got a nice batch of push blocks uh, and I really like them because they work even better than these commercial ones because they stick even better. They grab the wood even better with that anti-skid material. But while I was making these I was thinking you know I could use something like this for my jointer and I have an idea for something. So uh, if you haven't already subscribed you may want to do that today. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Stay tuned. Got lots more videos coming.